Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're going to be talking about my July reads and I cannot believe that this is my July wrap up video already because holy crap is this year flying by. Um, so yeah let's just jump right into it. So for those of you that don't know I um, uh, use Storygraph to look at all my or keep track of all my books and stuff. Um, and let me just pull them up for July. Usually I would just like scroll, scroll like through the screen to get all of my different graphs and stuff. But now they have like a graph wrap up. Um, and it looks, hold on, it looks like this, which is pretty cool. So it's like all of my stuff on one, which is actually very cool. So yes, I read 11 books. Um, I read 3,753 pages. My average rating was 3.59. Um, I read all fiction, 100% fiction. My average time to finish was four days, which is crazy. That's actually kind of cool. Um, average book length, 356 pages, six romance, five contemporary, three young adult, three thriller, one literary fiction, 55% print, 27% audio and 18% digital. I don't have all my physical books because as you guys know, I don't like holding on to library books. And one of them was due because someone else had it on hold and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna hold on to some of them. I'm just gonna return all of them. First up, we're gonna talk about the one that got away with murder by Trish Lundy. And this is the last one that I finished. So it's freshest in my mind. And this is actually Trish Lundy's debut novel and for a debut novel i thought it was pretty good um it is a ya um audience and it's basically about lauren o'brien who moves to a new school and ends up like having a hookup with um a guy named robbie and basically him and his brother are known around town for being troublemakers and both of their girlfriends mysteriously died. So what kind of unfolds in here is like um, a whodunit basically and them trying to get to the bottom of who killed Robbie and Trevor's girlfriends um, and all of that jazz. It did have a lot of twists. I didn't see who it was coming. Um, which is what got me. So I put, I love a good whodunit and this one was better than I expected. I kept jumping around for who it could be and I didn't suspect the person it ended up being. It was a page turning debut and I will definitely read whatever she publishes next. Um, the only thing I didn't like and it could just because um, I'm a prude, I guess you could say, but the audience is like 14 to 18 year olds and there's a lot of drugs and sex and stuff for it to be targeted towards 14 year olds you know what i mean like in my head 18 year olds are basically adults they can do whatever they want but like 14 year olds i don't like it but that's just my personal opinion don't kill me um but yeah so that's what i have to say about this one off to the races by elsie silver i've been wanting to read elsie silver books for a while and I finally was able to. Uh, I got it from Prime Reading. I've talked about Prime Reading before, and basically, if you have, um, if you have, you pay for Amazon Prime, you get to use Prime Reading, um, and they have some books on there that you can download to your Kindle or like rent for free. Off to the Races by Elsie Silver, and I gave this one three point seven five. Um, so basically this is about Vaughn and Billy and Billy is a horse trainer. Vaughn owns a horse farm. So it's very much so like cowboy themed, I guess you could say. Anyway, it's a gold, it's a, a Billy comes to work at the Gold Rush Ranch and um, they're kind of like Billy and Vaughn are kind of like enemies to lovers kind of thing. And um He's grumpy, she's sunshine, I would say, but she's also like very assertive and um, he hates but also loves that kind of thing. <laughs> but anyway, it's about Billy and Vaughn and uh, Billy trains the horse, Double Diablo or DD as she calls him because no one wanted to work with him because he reminded me of, if you guys have ever seen Spirit, <laughs> Stallion of the Cimarron and it's 
one of the best DreamWorks movies, if you ask me. Um, but he's kind of like spirit, very much so in that way where he's wild and can't be tamed. And Billy ends up being the only person that can actually work with him. So it's about that and getting Dee Dee ready for um, an upcoming horse race and kind of that stuff that devolves in that. Um, this is my first Elsie Silver read. Um, I liked it and it was a pretty quick and easy read. Loved Billy's character um, and the chemistry between her and Vaughn was like jumping off the page basically. Um, and I liked that. The ending just felt a little rushed for me because I feel like she spent so much of the, the book um, like building everything up and then the ending was just like boom, boom, boom and it was done. Um, like even the epilogue in here didn't give me what I wanted. Um, so that's kind of my only complaint is that it just felt rushed at the end. And I wish um, we saw their love story develop more, I guess. And um, yeah, she says it's a enemies to lovers trope, small town romance, 3.75. Take with that what you will. Um, next one is an audible book. And it's an Audible original. And I actually canceled my Audible membership, but my best friend Sonia sent me a book on Audible. And I guess that triggered me in their algorithm because they offered me a three month subscription of Audible for 99 cents a month. And I was like, $3 for three months? Sure, I'll take the bite. Um, yeah, so The Accidental Dating Experiment by Lauren Blakely. And I gave this one a three star. It was only six hours and 55 minutes, so it's a pretty quick one if you're listening to it. Um, quick, predictable, lighthearted read. It was almost like a Hallmark movie. So you know how like those movies are so corny and you know how it's going to end, but you can't help watching it anyway. That's kind of how I felt while listening to this book, honestly. Uh, 2.5 or 2 out of 5 for the spice level. Um, honestly, nothing memorable about it, but it's basically about two podcasters who have history who end up um, giving it another chance. So it's like a second, a second chance romance trope. And... Nothing memorable, honestly. I, I don't like saying that, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Next one was Funny Story by Emily Henry. I listened to this again on Audible. And... Oh, no. So, yeah, Funny Story by Emily Henry. And I gave it a 4.25 star. Okay. So this is about Daphne and Miles, who are the female and male main characters. And both Daphne and Miles were dumped by their partners. So Daphne ends up moving in with Miles and um, crashing there because she had nowhere else to go. And um, I wouldn't even say it's more about their love story because it's not it seems like them falling for each other is kind of like a secondary plot because the primary plot plot oh my god the primary plot is really Daphne learning to find herself um and she realized that she's very much so a people pleaser and she doesn't have any identity of her own so it's very much so her trying to figure that out and work through that um I did, it, I did relate to her a lot with this, and I enjoyed seeing how much she was able to find her own voice, make it her own, find out what makes Daphne happy versus what makes everyone else happy. Um, so I gave it a 4.25, and I really liked it. So it, I think that's probably one of my favorite Emily Henry books. I haven't read all of them, but I have had read a handful of them. But I think Funny Story in... Um, Book Lovers are probably like my two favorite Emily Henry books. Um, next one is, or the next three I'm going to be talking about were library books. So I don't have the physical copy, but I'll put the picture on the screen. Um, and it is The Two Lies of, Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie, Josie Silver. Now, I got this book because I saw Silver and I thought it was Elsie Silver. Elsie Silver, Josie Silver. I just grabbed it quickly because I was with 
all three of my kids. <laughs> and I don't like to be in the adult section for long because, you know, children are noisy. So I just quickly grabbed it thinking it was Elsie Silver and it was not. It was not Elsie Silver. But basically the premise of this story um, is that Josie Silver loses her fiance. That's not a spoiler. It says so in the back of the book. <laughs> um, and she loses her fiance. They're about to be married and it was supposed to be uh, she loses her fiancé on her birthday night. So he was on the way home to pick her up to go to the, her birthday dinner. And she loses him. And it's basically like a back and forth of her being in a dream world with him. And because uh, she gets prescribed sleeping pills. And every time she takes a sleeping pill, she dreams about her, fia uh, her fiancé. But he's still alive. So it's like they have their own little life in her dream world and then she has real life and then it's her going back and forth between the two and it was okay like I said I gave it a three stars it it just dragged I don't I don't think it needed to be as long as di it did I feel like that book would have been better as like a novella because it's just pretty long and it just seemed a little silly to me um because the reason why she stopped she decided that she needed to actually grieve her fiance and stop going back and forth was because in her dream she had an argument with her fiance and so I guess that argument was all she needed to be like mm, okay well I'm not going back to dreamland to see you anymore I just thought that was silly but yeah um do I recommend it maybe I don't know I don't know um next one is love from scratch by Caitlin Hill you know that phrase, never judge a book by its cover? That's what I did with this one. I was like, oh, cute. Baking love story. Got it. I'm grabbing it. Didn't read anything that it was about. I literally just saw the cover and grabbed it. I gave this 2.5 stars. Okay. This is my summary of it. Um, oh, basically, it's about um, Reese, who is the female main character, and I forgot the male main character's name one moment please see that's how much i didn't like it i forgot reese is the female benny is the ma uh, male men character um and i put this book was eh they had some cute sappy moments and funny food puns but overall i didn't like it the author was trying way too hard to incorporate female empowerment slash feminism, and it just felt extremely forced and unnatural. I understand wanting to normalize and promote feminism, but there is a way to do it without readers feeling suffocated by it. Um, Reese was whiny. Uh, she was a whiny woe is me character and it made her unbearable. Um, and the next part, I guess I have to explain the plot of the story first, but Benny and Reese have like a little cooking show and they're competing to see who gets the culinary internship at their current jobs. And Reese, I just didn't understand why she wanted to be a culinary intern without any interest or any experience in cooking. Whereas Benny did, he had been cooking his whole life. So it just seemed silly that she was like taking a, a cookie, a competition so seriously for a cooking internship when she's had zero prior interest in cooking before you know what I mean um and she was a little too focused on social media comments and the letter affect her too much like she had a whole mental breakdown in the book because of mean things people were saying about her on the internet and I'm like girl you gotta shake it off don't let it bother you so yeah it wasn't my favorite I didn't really like it um so I gave it 2.5 uh my last library read is um, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I have read Taylor Jenkins Reid before. Um, and I gave this one a 3.25 star. So basically this is about three siblings who, um, have an absent father and their mother ended up passing away when they were in high school. So, uh, the oldest sister kind of like steps in and fulfills that role for her siblings. And it's told two different uh, time periods. So it's like past and it gives more of her parents' backstory, their childhood growing up, and then like uh, also present. And then you have each of the sibling points of view as well. Um, so it's a dual timeline. Uh, I gave it a 3.25. I said, I'm still unsure how I feel about this one. 
there were, oh yes, there were too many side characters, okay? I could give two cents, okay, about a character that's in the book for like two seconds, you know what I mean? But it seemed like there was a whole lot of that. And I understand having side characters to add to the main characters, but they didn't add anything. They were just there. I'm like, why are there, there's like 30 characters in this book for absolutely no reason. I didn't think it was necessary. And I wish it would have just focused on the Reva kids more. Uh, the ending saved it um, a little bit for me. Without the ending, it probably would have been lower, but it's not my favorite Taylor Treat book. So would I recommend it? Maybe? I don't know. Um, the next one again is on my Kindle and I did it through the prime reading. So I already returned it. Okay. So the summer of broken rules by KL Walther, I gave it a three stars. And basically this is about Meredith and her family's been going to Martha's Vineyard, um, every summer for as long as they can remember, but they unexpectedly lost her sister. So they took like, I think it was a two year break and now they're going back for a wedding. And every year the family plays this game called Assassin where basically you have a target and you try to take them out by squirting them with a water gun. <laughs> um, and one of the targets she ends up like thinking is real cute um, and stuff like that from the groom's family, I believe. Um, so I gave it a three stars because it was right in the middle because I didn't love it, but I also didn't hate it. Um, it was right in the middle for me. I liked what happens after midnight better. I talked about that one last month, I believe. The female main character had a line where she said that the male main character never told her something. And I thought that was dramatic because they only knew each other for a week. She was like, they, they got into a fight. She's like, well, why? You never told me. Why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, ma'am y'all have known each other for like six days at this point what do you mean he never told you you know what i mean i just felt like she was being a little dramatic for no reason um but yeah that's how i felt about that one um i think if you want to read a kale walther book read what happens after midnight i think that one was a lot better but, so the next one is first light winds um by ashley elston and this one is about Evie Porter, who um, is basically, Evie Porter doesn't exist. That's a fake name that she has. And um, she's given a name and location by her boss, Mr. Smith, who she doesn't know who she is. Um, but basically, she's given a new name and a new location to go. And then after she's there, she's given um, what her actual job is. And so basically, um, it goes back, it has two timelines. So it has Evie Porter in the present, and then it has like her past identities too, and other things that she's done. And it kind of goes um, back and forth. It's kind of like a cat and mouse, I would say, because it's between her and her boss. Because her boss is trying to blackmail her, and she's trying to like figure out who her boss is, but she's trying to be sneaky with it, because if he finds out, She's like onto him or whatever. He'll ruin her life kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I gave that. I gave it a four stars. I said it was a good cat and mouse storyline and I liked the ending that I didn't see coming. Easy binge. The flashbacks can be a bit confusing, but it all ties together in the end. Because like I said, it talks about all her past identities too. And they don't seem relevant, but then as the book comes together, and ends, it, you realize it, it is relevant. Um, but yeah, I would recommend that one. So the last two I wanna talk about um, are not out yet. And um, I was actually sent an ARC for one of them, and then the other one is my book of the month read. It's The House of, ooh, the House of Glass by Sarah Pekinen, and then The Best Friends Playlist by Jessica King. Um, so let's just talk about The House of Glass first by Sarah Pekinen. And that name may sound familiar because she has written books um, with Greer Hendricks. That's her name. Greer Hendricks. Um, I actually have that book, but I gave it to my mom to borrow. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she's written a few novel novels with Greer Hendricks. This is her first standalone novel, if I'm not mistaken. It comes out August 6th. I gave this 3.75s and... I didn't read what this was about when I picked it for my book of the month. I was just like, ooh, Sarah Pekinen, interesting, and clicked it and put it in the cart. Um, but basically, 
Um, it's about a young nanny who died. Uh, and the person, Rose, is a nine-year-old girl who suffers from uh, traumatic mutism, AKA something very traumatic happened, so she stopped talking. And um, Stella is um, an attorney. She's a best interest attorney, and she never usually takes clients under the age of 13, but she went through something similar growing up where she went through traumatic mutism. Um, so that's why she agrees to take the case. And um, it's about Stella uncovering everything that happened. And obviously there's more to the story. And um, it's like a whodunit, I guess. Um, and she at, at one point thinks that the little girl did it. She suspects everyone in the book at one point. And it also gives a background of like um, what she has gone through too. And I, the only complaint, because like I said, I gave it a 3.75. It was an easy read. And it's very, if you've read Sarah Pekinen and Greer Hendricks books, it, you, you're familiar with um, the writing style. But my only complaint was that I didn't end up who, I didn't, end up liking who did the crime and I obviously can't say more about that without it being spoilers so one I didn't see it coming and two I was just kind of like oh well that kind of sucks <laughs> but so it was good I just didn't personally like who ended up doing it but that's just my personal opinion it doesn't really matter so this right here is an ARC that I received. So the Best Friends Playlist by Jessica King. It officially comes out October 14th. It is available for pre-order right now on Amazon if you choose to do that. Um, it is a full-length novel and it is the first book in the Pine Lakes Lovers series. So there is going to be more, which is very exciting. Um, and basically it's about two best friends named Jordan and Paige. And Paige is in love with Jordan. And... Uh, he doesn't love her back and uh, she leaves the town where they were she leaves Colorado for a while to go to school in California and um, she ends up coming back to Colorado for an internship and obviously she reconnects with Jordan and so um, it's a friends to lover romantic comedy filled with playful banter and daring characters and swoony moments that will make your heart squeal with happiness. Um, it's a closed door romance. It's a clean romance. It's a friends to lovers um, kind of thing. And I loved it. I gave it a five stars. I thought it was such a sweet book. So I received this book as an arc and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was such a fun and lighthearted read and I went through it pretty fast. Jordan and Paige are such lovable characters and their banter is great. Lots of angst in the book too and the ending was chef's kiss. The author also created a playlist that you can listen to while reading the book. So if you're into that, she does have a Spotify playlist. Um, so you can listen to the the playlist while you're reading the book as well and it brings the scenes to life more this book made you feel all the emotions and it is such a beautifully written book jessica wrote a good one and i can't wait to read more from her and like i said it's a clean romance book so besides them briefly talking about kissing there's nothing else in there so it's a perfect ya book um, for young adults and yeah i gave it a five stars so definitely check it out if you'd like and that's it that are all 11 books that I went through this month I feel like I've been talking for forever but yes please let me know what you guys have read this month if you had any favorites if you're interested in reading any of these let me know down in the comments below and also before we go I will say I hit my reading goal for the year so reading the 11 books that I read this month made me um, hit my 2024 reading goal so yeah. we hit our reading goal and we still have five months left of the year so We'll see how many books I end up reading. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.